Welcome back, friends. Hi. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Can't believe it's 2023 already. What in the world? Where did 2022 go? Seriously. Like, it, we blinked and it was Seriously. over. I know. My daughter's wow. six months old and now tomorrow she's going to be a year, so. That's crazy to I me. I can't stop thinking about that. So we're back for episode three. Super excited. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and today I am talking about... Josh Abed. Mm -hmm. Josh Abed. Who's that? Josh Abed. Um, <laughs> she's hidden in the pages. Right. <laughs> she's hidden um, in the pages. So she is Moses' mother. Yep. When I was looking to see who I wanted to do, her name stuck out to me because I said, oh, who's uh, Josh Abed? And when I started looking, I said, oh, it's Moses' mom. And then I was like, oh, wow, that's Moses' mom. Mm. She literally gave up her son put him in water gave up her son and then saved him isn't it crazy isn't it just crazy what she did the being brave so like all right so back in exodus time because that's where this we are in exodus is pharaoh who is threatened by the israelites mm -hmm. Which is crazy to me to even think that he said to the midwives, who are the real heroes of the whole story. Come on. Come on. After I started reading, I was like, honestly, we should be talking about the midwives. But and that's the truth. He's <laughs> like, um, threatened. So he tells the midwives to kill the babies if they're male and keep the females, which, again, I think is crazy to think about because I feel as though if you really wanted to stop that line, you should keep the males because the males are going to be the ones that can serve you. They're stronger than the females. Right. And if you're killing all the females, then there's no babies going to be born. So I think in his mind, he's like, yeah, if I keep all the males, they can overpower me at some point, at some you point, know? Right. So, but at some point, right, it's so right. crazy. So can I just interject yeah. for one second? <laughs> Midwives, let's talk about how they stood before the king and lied and said, you know, oh, all, all these Israelite women are having children like so fast that we can't even. And I'm thinking, oh, wait, what? What? You lied. Right. And God blessed it. Yeah. God blessed their lie. Like, I thought the same thing. And, you know, I just, I feel like. Even, you know, not to go off subject for one second, but let me bunny trail, <laughs> you know. So, you know, I, I started reading Genesis again and, um, you know, I'm, I'm in numbers now. And uh, I just read this morning about Cora, and, you know, he gets, him and his family and, and two other dudes get swallowed up alive by the earth so the earth opens they go down and that's that's that uh -huh. and in the next breath i mean all of israel all these people are standing in the desert and you just seen what happened and, and it happened because they were just like oh well moses you think that you're all lit and da da da, da right and right. so we're just as good as you are well God just showed you you're not, right. okay? <laughs> That's really what happened. And then in the next sentence, in the next paragraph, all the people stop murmuring. You pull us out of Egypt where we had figs and we had bread and we had meat and yep. just for us to die. And I'm thinking, you idiot, right? right? That, I'm just being yes, honest. Like, yes. you idiot. You j First of all, you just seen what just happened. Right. Second of all, like, how how many times you're going to do this? And I, I promise you, Trisha, I heard Jesus clear as day. Clear as day. And he said, what's the difference between you and them? Right, yeah. You do the same thing. Right. How many times do you com complain and murmur and I deliver you for you to just go back into? Right. And I'm like, oi. That's so funny that you say that because, oh man, I was pushing my daughter on the swing uh, a couple days ago. 
and I'm pushing her. Now I have a two-year-old and a six-month-old. And the six-month-old is in the little baby swing, and I'm pushing her, and my oldest is sitting in the big girl swing. So I'm pushing her. I just started pushing her, and she's like, faster, higher. I want to go higher, right? Mm. So I was like, I can only push you so fast. Like, it's you got to go slow before you can get to the high part. Like, you got to go slow. And literally, like, instantly I heard Jesus say, I'm doing the same thing with you. Woo! Who's that? Come on. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> but isn't that but it's the, the truth? truth. It's yes. because we do the same thing. Like you read in the Bible and he said the same thing. Like, what's the difference? What's the difference of me? God, why haven't you answered my prayers? Come on. Why haven't you <laughs> delivered him? Or why haven't you done this? Why haven't you taken this pain that I feel inside? Why haven't you taken that from me? Right. Do you even hear me? Exactly. But it's like me pushing Octavia on the swing, pushing her, and yeah. you can only go so fast. So at first, you gotta you gotta get the momentum going, right? right? Like, and his time isn't our time. Come on. So our momentum and his momentum isn't the same. Yes. So stop complaining, or you're gonna get eaten up by the earth. Come on. <laughs> That's what I'm right? talking about. Right? Yes. Like. <laughs> and it's true because I think I think because everything is so fast paced right. in life. Right. Everything, microwave, everything. everything. Everything is just so okay. I can I can cook my dinner in twenty minutes. Right. You right. know what I mean. And if yeah, I that, don't want a quick dinner, I can go exactly, to Wendy's. Right. Exactly. Um, and the line ain't moving fast enough. Right. Exactly. You know. Right. Um, my text message isn't going through fast. Come enough. on. Why is it pending? Right. Like yeah, no. And it's just I think that we need, we need, as humanity in and of itself not even saved people but especially saved people we need to go back to slow down a little bit right you know what i mean right. and have a little patience because honestly that's that's one of the fruits of the spirit mm. patience right you know um it's, so my uh, pastor were just was just talking about this last last sunday um, do you know that picture of, it's just a picture, I post it randomly all the time, but it's a person and their hands are lifted, mm. and it's the behind of them, and in the picture you can see a um, lightning bolt, and on one side is a demon, and on the other side is an angel, and mm. they have swords, they're fighting, and it's the person with their hands lifted. I say that because I think of this when he, when he talked about this. Um, last weekend we started our 21, our our 14 day fast we're doing mm -hmm. a two week fast daniel fast and he was talking about how daniel fasted for 21 days so he prayed what yep. he prayed and then he fasted for 21 days so for 21 days he fasted and what pastor jordan was saying is that um the for 21 days the answer came down Absolutely. the moment he spoke it the moment daniel spoke his prayer yes the answer came down but for 21 days the angels and the demons were fighting against Each so other, for yep. 21 days so i just think that in our in our life like that's where god's saying slow down i sent your answer but there is more out there than you can see right and somebody working against you come on and my angels are fighting that that enemy you just have to have patience yep because it's going to happen, you just have to have patience and it's time. I agree with that a thousand percent, a thousand percent, because there's so many prayers that we have prayed and have yet for them to be answered how we prayed. Mm, right. Do you know what I mean? Right. But you know that God, I know that God has answered it. It's just not in my time yet. Right. You know? Yeah. And I do believe that, you know, just like Daniel, that that demonic prince of Persia, he comes and he tries to snatch that answer to a lot of times to discourage, mm. to stop us from praying. Right. To stop us from believing to stop us from having hope in God. Right. 
And I think that's the biggest one is the hope. Come on. If you can take somebody's hope away, it's shattered. The Bible says that too. Hope deferred makes the heart grow sick. Mm. And how many times have you hoped for something over and over and over again? And, you know, some days are better than others, but, you know, this one day comes and your, your hope is gone and all you can do is cry. Mm. And God, I thought that, you know, X, Y, and Z, when, you know, but then when the answer comes, it's like a tree right? that just went too inside and you're like, oh, right, you know, right, right. sorry, oh, bunny sorry. trail. Go let's ahead. Get, let's let's <laughs> hippity hop back on the trail here. <laughs> uh, okay. Josh Abed. So I don't even remember. So she was bold enough to... Keep her baby for three months, first of all. They were told to get rid of all the babies, throw them in the water, mm -hmm. throw them in the river. She's like, no, I'm going to keep my baby. So she kept him for three months, and then she made a waterproof basket. Like, I just find that to be crazy. Like, she knew to make a waterproof... I don't know. It just That's crazy to me. She made a waterproof basket for her baby, her three-month-old, put him in a basket, right. and just set him out down the river. And maybe she knew that Pharaoh's daughter bathed there, there every single day mm -hmm. because she had her daughter watch Moses. Right. So I just find it to be, one, that she's resourceful, right? Resourceful. And I want to be like that. Come on. I want to be bold enough. She, because she had to have heard something. Exactly. Within her to say save this child exactly even if she didn't know what it was coming from she had to have heard something in order for her to make a waterproof because if she got caught making a waterproof basket she would have died right not you know what i mean and right. then you know i if if what the bible says is true and i tend to believe the whole bible right me too. you know hook line and sinker so god even though it didn't happen just yet, but she comes from the line of Levi. Mm. Okay. And the Levites, the Levi people were priests unto God. Right. All of them. And their job was to worship him, mm -hmm. to be preachers. That was their job. I think God honored that. Right. Even though she didn't know yet. I think because who God is, he honored what he was going to do with that line. So I think he spoke to her. And whether she knew it was God or she didn't, I think she followed the voice inside. Right. For the sake of her son, too. She, right, would, she You know, she didn't want to be a murderer either. Right, exactly. You know? So I think she, she followed that voice inside. Just like, and I know you can testify to what I'm going to say, but God will whisper a sweet nothing inside right. and you have a choice to follow it or no. Right. Right. And a lot of times we do. I mean, there's times we don't, right. but, and we pay the consequences exactly. for when we yeah, don't, yeah. but I think that that's what she did. And I think that she got blessed by that though. Yes. Because... She didn't know if this voice or whatever she heard or felt, maybe she felt something, she felt led to go and put the baby in the basket. She didn't know if he was going to survive. Right. She didn't know if, even if she did know that the Pharaoh's daughter bathed there every day, she didn't know if, if when she saw the baby, she'd be like, oh, a Hebrew baby and throw it in the, Come she didn't on. know that. Right. She took a right. chance. She sure did. And because. I didn't even think of that. Because mm. she did take a chance, God blessed her because then her daughter came out of the woodwork like, oh, hey, you found a baby? Random. Right. <laughs> Let me go find somebody for you to nurse him. And then she went and got her mom. So now not only did she obey whatever it was that she felt or heard, mm. she got to raise her son. Because I do believe it wasn't just like, oh, after a year, she went and gave Moses to the daughter. I think that she probably nursed him for a while. Right. Because back then, that was the thing. That's how you fed it. Like, that's, they didn't just stop nursing after a year like they do now. Mm. 
oh, go on cow's milk. No, that's not. And that's the truth. That's the truth. Babies, kids, toddlers, one, two, three years old, four years old, would still nurse and stuff. So I, in my mind, I just think that she raised him for a lot longer than just a baby. Right. You know? I, I, think, I think you're absolutely positively right. I don't think she knew the extent of, because let's face it, Moses knew his people. Right. He knew he was he was an Israelite, a right. Hebrew, um, just being brought up in, in an Egyptian home. And Pharaoh hated him. Right. You know, regardless of what people think, the Ten Commandments and all that craziness right. is not the truth. Right. Pharaoh, the Bible says Pharaoh hated Moses, but he kept it. It, you know, he was inside of his house for the sake of his daughter. Right. And that's it. Right. So I don't think Joshua ever knew the extent of what Moses would become right. or what he would do. We think about it, though, because even if you read about Moses, he had to have known his family because his brother Aaron. Right. Was, you said he's older. Yeah. Right. So when God spoke to Moses and said you're gonna go you're gonna go back he was like well i can't like he literally argued with god right i can't talk well i'm gonna i'll have your your brother do it right aaron did it but moses did it you know what i mean yeah. so like he had to have known his family so he had to have been raised with them right or around them or known exactly them. Like he had to have known so i just feel like i wonder even in moses's mind why like, I, I don't know. I just wonder, like, how he would have felt. He had to have seen his mom and his brother and his sister. Mm. And he lived in the, in, in the palace. Right. You know? Right. That's just crazy. It had to have been, like, a, a, a torn, you know, love. Because, you know, I know that with any divorce of a mother or a father, and then, you know, the mother and the father get remarried or whatever, for the children, and I'm just, you know... Sometimes for me, I'm just speaking of me. It's kind of difficult to have mom and stepmom in the same room because you just don't know how you're supposed to be. Right. You know, you love them both and you don't want one to hurt over the other. You know what I right, mean? Right. So I can only imagine how Moses must have felt right. with mom right. and stepmom. Right. You know, um, it, it had to have been a, and then... Right, because I think that he definitely would have known his mom, Josh Abed, for a long time. Like, right. until of knowing, you know what I mean? Right. Like, it wasn't just, like, two years old and here's my child. I don't know, I'd, I could be wrong, but I, it's just my feeling. Right. Because he definitely knew his family. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Because when he, you know, when he fled, um, and he was in Midian... You know, it was, he was just like undone with leaving his, his family. Right. But the crazy thing is like Aaron knew exactly where to find Moses. Mm, right. Isn't that something? Yeah. yeah. So when God said, well, you know, you're making all these excuses why you can't do thus and thus. You know, you're telling me you stutter and you can't speak. Well, I'll tell you what. Your brother's coming to you and he's going to be the voice for you. Okay, so all these people in the Bible, I know we're talking about Josh Abed, but like, how are, it's so relevant. Don't we just argue with God? All the time. But they argued with God. <laughs> Who would just open up the earth. <laughs> right you know what I mean like <laughs> everybody complaining and I I was just I was just talking about that because you know you've got God had me start in Genesis again and so I'm going through and now I'm in numbers and Trisha <laughs> I'm I'm reading just this morning the story of Korah it's funny how you say that right so I'm reading the story of Korah and Korah and two other dudes talk amongst themselves and go, well, you know, we're just as good as Moses. Why does he think he's all that in a bag of chips? Well, I'm going to say something. 
So Korah goes over and Moses, the Bible says that Moses is like sad, like, yo, shh, like, don't say another word, man. Mm -hmm. Just don't. Because he knows God's listening. Right. And he knows that God chose him. Okay? Let's face it. And it's one of my favorite songs right now. Show me a face. But Moses is like, yo, I don't want nothing else. Nothing. I don't want riches. I don't want to be the leader. I don't want nothing. The only thing that I want from you is to see you face to face. And God says, and I, I find this so beautiful. Here I go bunny trailing again, right? right? But God said, okay. I'm going to put you in the cleft of the rock and I'm going to put my hand over you because you can't see me face to face and live. Mm. There's something about the spirit realm versus the earthly realm. Right. 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 And so, you know, here's Cora saying all this nonsense. And so Moses calls the other two dudes out and the arrogance on the other two are like, I'm not coming out to see you. Mm. And the Bible says that Moses was like aggravated with those two. So long story short, they all stand before the ta tabernacle and Moses says, I'll tell you what, everybody, if these three dudes are just as important as I am. And this, this isn't arrogance, nor pride. This is what God said to him. Right. If these three men are just as important as I am, then nothing will happen to them. But if not, the earth will open and they will go down into Sheol, hell, basically mm. alive. Mm. Right. Mm -mm. The earth opened and bye. Bye. Like, peace. <laughs> but then, listen, but then one chapter later, all the Israelite people murmuring and complaining, Moses, you pulled us out of Egypt for, we were eating dates and figs and meat and bread and all the water we wanted and you want to kill us out in the desert. We have nothing. The Bible says that God himself, God, was heated mm. and sent a plague. And I'm like, you idiots. Like, what the heck is the matter with you? And the moment I said that, Jesus said, well, don't you do the same thing? Don't. And I was so convicted because, and I know it sounds funny, but I was convicted because we do. We do. God will bless us. And we stand in that blessing and we're like, oh my God. And then give us a week. And <laughs> we're right week. back to... A week? A day. Come on. Come on. And then we're right back to... Blah, 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 blah. Like... And I, the patience and the glory that God has with his people. Mercies are made new every morning. And truly, his mercies over us are made new every morning. Mm -hmm. And I praise God for it because Lord knows I don't deserve it. Absolutely not. Going back on the bunny trail. <laughs> Sorry. Josh Abed, that's it. I mean, she was bold. She was brave. She was resourceful. I, I want to be all of those things when Absolutely. it comes to my kids. I want to be bold and I want to be brave. I want to be able to know that they're going to be okay. Even if I don't know what's going to happen, right. you know? I think that's why it's good f for us to stay connected to Jesus. Because if we don't, let's face it, our children don't tell us everything. Right. Right? And our children could be going through some serious stuff. And if we don't know how to properly pray, we don't know how to fight for them right. on their behalf. Right. Because if they don't know how to pray. Right. You know, and um, 
I think that's the biggest thing is like, you don't know until you know. So if you're listening to this and you're like, well, my kid is five or 10 or 15 or 20 or whatever. And you just learned that, oh, maybe we should be praying. I should teach them how to pray. You, you, you start when you find out. Come on. So my kids are two and six months and my two year old, I pray with every night. And I let her at the end of me praying, I say, okay, who do you want to pray for? And she'll just say like, I want to pray for this little boo-boo on the wall and I want to pray for my owl and I want to pray for, and I just, and I do, and I pray for those things because that's going to form that relationship. Absolutely. Like even my little tiny things that I have to pray for mattered. My mom made it seem like it mattered, so it must matter. So I'm going to do that. And that's just going to be her way of praying through her life. So I think that you don't know until you know. And if you're finding out now that prayer is super helpful, yes, powerful, moves mountains, then you start now. Right. You know, no matter what age your child is at. Absolutely. I especially, you know, the world that we live in now, and it's it's only progressively getting worse. Oh, yeah. But, you know, there is let's talk about just bullying for a second Mm. like you know and it starts i worked in in with children for 26 years i know what i'm talking about bullying starts in preschool yeah it starts in preschool i i would have to say that bullying starts at home and i i believe that by what they hear and see some kids their first bullies are their parents without realizing it right they don't know or even you know, sitting in front of the, the TV right. and, you know, it may be innocent enough, but, and so I just feel like if your child is getting bullied, you need to know, I mean, know how to pray right? for them to be able to be comfortable enough to come to you or God intervene. Right. I mean, intervene now. You know, because, I mean, I I know a woman that her daughter committed suicide mm. because of it. That's horrible. It's not Ugh. okay. No, it's not. And it's it's becoming more and more and more, and it just breaks my heart. Absolutely. Because these kids at such a young age think that they don't have any self-worth. Come on. And they do, Come you know, on. and it's just, it's horrible. So... Prayer definitely does move mountains. It does, for sure. So with that being said, we want to make sure that you guys like and subscribe yes, for our next please. episode. It drops every Tuesday, the new episode every Tuesday. And next week, we are going to talk about Tamar. I don't even really know who that is, so I'm really excited about it yeah. to learn about somebody new. But make sure you tune in, like and subscribe, and we always like to end in prayer. Yeah. So, you know, I definitely, my heart is, you know, right here with, it's very, very important for you to be connected to God and to hear um, what God has to say and how he's directing you to pray. But right now I'd like to, you know, um, hold hands with Trisha, come in agreement with with her on your behalf and if you can if anything that we spoke about what we talked about buddy trails and all if it if it resides in you shoot us a a little message and you know we will we will reach out to you and we will pray um you know and if if anything with your children or We'll pray. We'll pray. So on on that note, (laughs) precious Holy Spirit, we love you so much and we thank you for who you are and what you've done. We thank you, Jesus, for your mercies being made new every morning. Jesus, we ask that every listener Mm. that is struggling in whatever area that they're going through, whether it's a lack of faith, whether it's their children being rebellious, whether it's they've backslidden, whatever the case may be, 
they're bound by depression. Jesus, I ask that you would step into their atmosphere, their world, their room. And I pray, Jesus, that you would break chains off of their minds, off of their lives. I pray for freedom. I pray, Jesus, that they would be everything that you have called them to be. I pray that you would open up the ears of their heart to be able to hear you, Holy Spirit. I pray, Jesus, that you would equip them with strength and peace. Jesus, I thank you for each listener, and I ask that you would continue to move upon me and Trisha, and may we do your will in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful night. Bye. We're kicking, kicking it with Jesus. Jesus.